Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis. In this video, we are going to look at the total synthesis of hunterine A. This work was published in JAX by the Stoltz Group in their paper, An Antioselective Total Synthesis of Hunterine A, enabled by a desymmetrization rearrangement strategy. Hunterine A is a monoterpene indole alkaloid that was first isolated in 2019 by Zhang, Yi and co-workers from Hunteria Zelanica. It belongs to a class of alkaloids which feature a rearranged indole ring where the N1-C2 bond has been broken, generating a large ring at the centre of the molecule. To date, goniomine, which was isolated from gonioma malagasy, remains the only structurally related alkaloid to be isolated and this has never been synthesised. Only preliminary biological data has been obtained for this compound and it shows moderate activity against liver cancer cells. The key challenge with the synthesis of the structure is the central seven-membered ring which is embedded in a pentacyclic framework. This framework contains four contiguous stereocenters, two of which are quaternary, and these quaternary centres form the junctions of the Aza bicyclo 431 decane core. To construct this core, they would use an azocope manic reaction cascade, while the stereochemistry could be introduced using a reductive desymmetrization. Finally, an azide alkene dipolar cycloaddition could be used to complete the azo bicyclo decane core. So let's dive into the synthesis. The first reaction utilizes cyclopentenone which reacts in an umpalong fashion to act as a nucleophile. This is achieved by first reacting it with triphenylphosphine, generating an enolate intermediate that is trapped with TBS triflate. The beta position can then be deprotonated with n buley to form an illid, and this undergoes nucleophilic addition to ethyl acrylate. This addition generates an enolate, and once again this was trapped as a silyl group. This prevents unwanted side reactions that can occur from the nucleophilic addition of the alpha position of the ester. Once the conjugate addition was complete, water and TBAF were added. The fluoride can attack the silyl groups, cleaving the silicon oxygen bond, and this drives the elimination of triphenylphosphine to reform the enone system. Overall, this reaction formed the product in a 64% yield. In the next step of the synthesis, a conjugate addition using an organocopper reagent was carried out. This reaction required significant optimization, and it was essential that the Grignard reagent was added last after all other reagents had been mixed together. This included TMS chloride, which promotes 1 4 addition over 1 2 addition. The role of TMS chloride in this reaction has been studied extensively, yet there is still uncertainty about its precise role in the reaction. These studies used organolithium precursors instead of Grignards, so it is likely that the mechanisms are similar. Using lithium NMR, Lipschitz has shown that there's an interaction between the TMS chloride and the lithium cation, and he suggests that this interaction modulates the reactivity of the organocopper cluster. Using DFT calculations, Snyder has also proposed a mechanism where the TMS chloride acts as a Lewis base. However, he suggests that the chloride coordinates to the copper and stabilizes the intermediate through a beta silicon effect. Corey, on the other hand, favors a mechanism with the TMS chloride acts as a silylating reagent. He suggests that this acts on the transition state, silylating the oxygen after the initial bond between the pi electrons of the enone system and the d orbital of the copper reagent has been formed. The most recent work in this reaction has come from the group of Stephen Burtz, who had previously worked on this reaction with the Snyder group. His group carried out very careful synthetic studies and plotted reactivity profiles for this reaction under a range of conditions. The mechanism that he proposes is similar to that proposed by Corey, where the TMS chloride acts as a silylating reagent. Unlike Corey, he suggests that this happens after the conjugate addition and that the TMS chloride reacts with the metal-bound enolate. In this paper, it is noted that the TMS chloride could be acting in several different ways and that its function as a Lewis base may also be important. Taking these studies together, we could propose the following mechanism. The Grignard reagent undergoes transmetallation with the copper bromide DMS complex, forming the organic copper reagent. This forms a pi complex with the enone, with the TMS chloride acting as a Lewis base and coordinating to the copper. This reagent, as the vinyl group in a conjugate fashion, 
with the TMS chloride silating the enolate, either during the transition state or after the addition has occurred. The TMS enol is very labile and can be hydrolyzed upon workup, forming a ketone to generate the target compound in a 75% yield. With the vinyl group in place, the molecule was subject to a claisen condensation. The alpha position was deprotonated with potassium terbutoxide, and the enolate then underwent intramolecular attack with the ester. The intermediate then eliminates potassium ethoxide, forming a symmetric diketone in an 86% yield. We've seen this diketone before in loose synthesis of botrytotoxin in A, where it was also used in a desymmetrization strategy. To desymmetrize this diketone, they used a Nyori asymmetric transfer hydrogenation. This uses a chiral ruthenium catalyst, which first reacts with triethyl ammonium formate, abstracting an equivalent of hydrogen and eliminating carbon dioxide. This hydrogen adds to the convex side of the diketone, forming the alcohol in a 57% yield with a 91% EE. This reaction was quite difficult to achieve, and even with optimized conditions, still produced a 37% yield of the overreduced diol. This could be recycled by reoxidizing it with tempo and PIDA to reform the diketone in a 68% yield. With the chiral hydroxyl group now introduced, it was protected using TBS chloride and DMAP. The ketone was then reacted with hydroxyl ammonium chloride in methanol with sodium bicarbonate to form an oxime. This was formed in a 1 to 1.3 Z to E ratio. However, they found that only the E oxime could take part in the next step. To overcome this, the Z-oxime was isomerized by refluxing it overnight in pyrene with hydroxylamine hydrochloride to generate the E-oxime with a 74% total yield over two cycles. In the next step, this was reacted with thionyl chloride to carry out a Beckman rearrangement. The hydroxyl group attacks the sulfur to displace the chloride and this activates the oxygen atom towards elimination. The HOMO of the carbon-carbon bond can overlap with the LUMO of the NO bond and this allows a migration to occur eliminating chloride and sulfur dioxide. This forms a six-membered nitrogen-containing ring with a cationic sp2 center. This is attacked by water and chloride then acts as a base to deprotonate it, forming an amidic acid that rapidly tautimerizes to the more stable lactam in a 75% yield. Taking this forward, the lactam was then reduced using lithal. The lithium coordinates to the oxygen, making it more electrophilic, and a hydride then undergoes nucleophilic addition, forming a hemiaminal intermediate. Electron donation from the nitrogen lone pair allows for the elimination of the lithium oxide. This forms an aminium intermediate that is then attacked by lithal, reducing it to form the saturated piperidine ring. The TBS group was also lost during this reaction, revealing the deprotected alcohol. The amine was then selectively alkylated using bromoacetonitrol and potassium carbonate to deliver the tertiary amine in an 80% yield over two steps. In the next reaction, the alcohol was oxidized using a swern oxidation. DMSO attacks oxalyl chloride, displacing a chloride that then attacks the activated sulfoxide, forming a sulfonium chloride, together with the elimination of carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and chloride. The sulfonium chloride is then attacked by the hydroxyl group, and triethylamine can then deprotonate the intermediate allowing for the intramolecular abstraction of a hydrogen atom. This forms the ketone in an 84% yield upon the elimination of dimethyl sulfide. This ketone was then reacted in a Grignard addition. An n boc protected aniline bearing a vinyl iodide group is first deprotonated with phenyl magnesium bromide and then turbo Grignard and lanthanum trichloride are added. The isopropyl magnesium chloride undergoes transmetallation with the vinyl iodide forming the Grignard reagent, while the lanthanide coordinates to the carbonyl, making the ketone more electrophilic. The Grignard adds to the more sterically accessible convex side of the molecule, forming the product as a single isomer. Deprotonation of the aniline proved to be essential to the success of the reaction, as no addition to the ketone was observed when only turbo Grignard was used. This is likely due to the deprotonation competing with the transmetallation process. With the Grignard complete, the Bach group was then removed using TMS chloride and methanol, forming the target compound with a 59% yield over two steps. In the next step, the newly revealed amine was then converted to an azide group. 
Sodium nitrite is reacted with hydrochloric acid, eliminating water, to form a nitrosonium ion. This is attacked by the aniline, forming a hydroxydiazine intermediate. Protonation of the hydroxy group and elimination of water forms a diazonium salt, which is a highly reactive aromatic species. This can eliminate nitrogen gas to form a phenyl cation that is then attacked by sodium azide, forming the product in a 73% yield. With this in place, they can then carry out the critical azocope manic reaction cascade. The compound is reacted with silver nitrate, which coordinates to the nitrile group, promoting its elimination as silver cyanide. The resulting aminium intermediate is primed for a 3 3 azocope rearrangement. The pi electrons of the alkene can attack the aminium species, pushing the migration of the carbon nitrogen double bond and the breaking of a carbon carbon sigma bond. This forms an enol that can take part in a manic reaction where it nucleophilically attacks the aminium ion, forming a new carbon carbon single bond together with a ketone. Overall, this transformation expanded the five membered ring to a six membered ring, oxidized the alcohol to a ketone, and introduced a new pyrrolidine ring to the polycyclic framework. With the polycyclic framework now formed, the remaining alkene then took part in an azide alkene dipolar cycloaddition. While this step could be telescoped directly from the previous reaction, they found that better stereoselectivity could be achieved by first isolating the compound and then stirring it in heptane at 23 degrees. This formed a triazoline ring in an 80% yield with a 2.5 to 1 DR at C19, and its structure was proved by X ray crystallography. This triazoline ring was then photo decomposed using UV light. This eliminates nitrogen gas and forms a diradical species. These radicals then combine to form a three membered aziridine ring, which was then attacked by acetic acid. This opens the ring to form an ester, and this ester was then hydrolyzed with potassium carbonate in methanol with a 54% yield over two steps. This completed the synthesis of Huntrine A, and its structure could unambiguously be proven using extra crystallography. Well, I hope you enjoyed that incredibly elegant synthesis. Join me in the next video, where we will look at the total synthesis of bipolar ID.